Well, would you look at that? It's finally snowing here. And what better day to be testing a vehicle like this than with some snow? Our spotlight today is on this 2021 Subaru Crosstrek Outdoor. Now this is the middle trim here in Canada, but in the United States, if you're looking at this, this would be your sport trim as here in Canada, our sport trims are different. So they've renamed this one, the outdoor for our market. Price is just under $30,000 Canadian, under $27,000 US. You get some features with this, but the big selling feature are the safety features that come with this Subaru Crosstrek. Now, I say that this is an Impreza with a lift, and it's true because pretty much all the dimensions are the same between this Crosstrek and the Impreza. If we compare it to the Sport 5-door that we featured eh, about two years ago now, has the same cargo volumes, same front and rear dimensions on the inside, and it's only 150 millimeters taller, 10 millimeters shorter, and has about 90 millimeters more ground clearance with a 45 millimeter wider overall vehicle. So you're getting a little bit more ground clearance, over the Impreza, that's kind of it. I mean, because the Impreza's got four-wheel drive, so does this. So, yeah, you know, you're looking at kind of the same features, more or less the same price. So it depends on what you really want your vehicle to do. And if you live somewhere like here, where you do get a lot of snow, maybe the ground clearance will help. You also have a 13 liter larger gas tank. So that also might help if you're planning on going on a longer distance trip, it could help you don't have to fill up quite as much. Now, how will you know that this is an outdoor trim here in Canada? Well, there's some extra plastic cladding on the outside. We also get the dual X mode system that we featured a couple years ago when it came to the Subaru Forester. So we're hopefully gonna be able to test that out a little bit here as we're getting some snow, but that is pretty much the major mechanical feature. It's different by going with the outdoor trim. It's more off-roadsy, bad weather condition kind of vehicle. So you've got those features there. Now this also has a hill descent control system, a front view camera, unique yellow and gunmetal interior accents. And we've got halogen headlights, a wiper de-icer and LED fog lights at the bottom of this. Now the front view camera, that pretty much comes on when you've put the car into reverse and it'll turn on the front camera on that teeny tiny screen that sits above the infotainment system. So it's slightly different than your typical, I mean, it's a 180 degree camera system, I suppose, if you wanna call it, I mean, we're missing the side views. So you do have a little bit more than some of the other vehicles in this subcompact crossover segment. Will it be super helpful on a tiny screen like that? I don't know, it is there. As a taller person, I'm six foot, I'm losing a bit of the top end of that screen though, where I'm seated. So it's a little hard for me to get the full visual experience from that front camera. Now this uses a 2.5 liter boxer engine, produces 182 horsepower, 176 pound feet of torque, a little bit more powerful than the two liter engine that would come on this standard. On the inside, it's pretty much cookie cutter when it comes to the Subarus that we featured before, especially compared to the Impreza. Pretty much the only thing to note is we've got an eight inch infotainment system that has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with a six speaker basic audio system. You do have leatherette seating throughout, front heated seats and a heated steering wheel. That's essentially it for the features and convenience. You do have pretty much all the safety tech that we do want to have, including Subaru's EyeSight safety system that includes things like blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, and active cruise control. So you're buying this because you want something safe. You want something with four wheel drive. You want something that hopefully will get you through some bad weather. The best way to test it though, obviously, is to try it out on the road. If you really wanna know absolutely everything there is to know about the interior and everything, I go take a look at the Impreza video that we did last. We featured them twice now, and again, pretty much has not changed, despite this actually being a facelift for 2021. So we're gonna take this on the road now. We're gonna talk about how the Subaru Crosstrek performs in the snow and everything else you need to know if you're in the market for a $30,000 subcompact crossover. Well, folks, once again, the weather has been a disappointment. Here we are, the morning of a big snowstorm, and all that snow actually came down in the middle of the night. So there is some snow on the road, not as much as we were hoping for. I was hoping for quite a bit on the road and not quite as much plowing going on, similar to what we had when we featured the Subaru Forester a couple years ago, but yeah, you know, what can you do, right? We do have a little bit of snow. I can talk about how this vehicle performs in you know, rougher weather. It's not the end all be all Armageddon level amount of snow, but it'll give us a bit of an idea of how this vehicle performs. 
Now let's talk about the fuel economy first. This completed our 100 kilometer test loop in 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers. Not too bad for a subcompact crossover, but if we think to our long-term Kia Seltos SX, that completed it in seven liters per 100 kilometers. Now this uses a CVT, they are supposed to be more fuel efficient, but yeah, it's a 2.5 liter engine with no turbo or anything, so maybe that's where we lose some of it. Plus, yeah, I wouldn't say that this car is heavy, but it does feel a little heavy, it feels a little bloated on the road. So fuel economy, okay. We are running Bridgestone Blizzak tires on this. It's not our first rodeo when it comes to these tires, but it is when it comes to a Subaru, as they usually put on Toyo Observe GSI 5 tires depending on the type of vehicle. So for the most part, Subarus we've tested with that. Now we've got something different. So it gives me an opportunity to see, was our success with the other vehicles because of the tires, or is it because of Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive? Now we'll be trying to get into some rougher areas as we drive along here. And keep in mind, I only have one camera. So what you might be seeing on a front-facing view is not necessarily what's actually going on as we're talking and driving about it. But what can I tell you about this Subaru? Well, first of all, I'd say that us as car enthusiasts are probably not the best people to be reviewing a car like this. And you know, we like to have something fun and exciting. I always look for that it factor when it comes to a vehicle that standout feature or design trait or something that makes a vehicle really worth buying if you're somebody like me. But the problem is people like me don't buy these cars. Your average consumer is looking at Subaru and looking at this type of vehicle, looking at the Crosstrek because this subcompact crossover market is really more for the mainstream buyer who just wants something safe, secure, family hauling capabilities without too much fuss. So I might not be the best person. A lot of the people on YouTube aren't the best people because this car is really boring. Sorry, Subaru, but it's true. This is the same thing that we featured when it came to the Impreza. There is nothing different about the interior on this, except for the yellow trim. Woohoo, something different there, but it's basically the same. It's actually incredibly similar. We talked about the interior dimensions. It's basically identical to what the Impreza has to offer. You just have a little bit more ground clearance. And that's the way that it feels when I'm driving this on the road. I do feel like I'm sitting a little bit higher, but you know, I wouldn't tell you if I, if you just threw me into the interior of this and I wasn't aware of what model it was, I don't know. I would probably say it was an Impreza. So the point is you're buying this because you want something safe, secure, reliable. You want the safety tech and features, but you're not looking for any sort of standout feature because it doesn't have it. This doesn't come very well equipped, comes well equipped for the price. But you know, if you're going top end stuff, you're not really getting a whole lot. You do have what you need. Heated front seats is nice and a heated steering wheel. And then all the safety tech that we really want to see out of a vehicle at this price point and in this size segment. I've got active cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot, all that stuff. Everything that I really want and need to keep me and my family safe. The front camera is kind of a plus. Now, I think we've seen it before on other vehicles that had only a front and rear camera, no side cameras, and it's different. Yeah, does it come in use all the time? Not really, but it's there. So for whatever reason, you need to see what's directly in front of you, you can. Assuming it's not gunked up with snow, which probably by the end of this driving segment, it will be. <laughs> it's pretty unavoidable unless you're a manufacturer that puts a spray nozzle on the front, which we don't really see that for the front. Not often and not in the consumer segment, that's for sure. But yeah, you know, the car handles pretty well. It's, it's got good grip. We took it around the corner there a little bit quicker than you might do so safely, just so that we can kind of give it some testing. And the road that I'm on right now, it's pretty much all covered in snow. It's plowed, but there's still snow. I don't have any asphalt that I'm actually connecting with and it's all snow, but it's fine. Everything works well. Can't really do like an emergency brake test since I'm on public roads. And it's one of the downsides of filming where I am. I'm no major outlet. I can't just take a test track and do a whole bunch of testing on it for a day or two, but it gives me an idea of what you would be living with on a daily basis. And that's ultimately what's the most important when you're buying a car and buying this car. You want to see how it performs in a real world situation. Case in point today, maybe you were at work, your kids at school, whatever it may be. Maybe it didn't snow when you woke up. It wasn't a snow day. And then now all of a sudden, you got to get somewhere and it's an emergency. You want to make sure you can do that safely. 
I think that this would be fine. I have no issues with the traction, no issues with the control. Would have been nice to try out the X mode, dual X mode, but even gunning it through there, it just stays right where you want it to. Now, the X mode stuff, that's for really deep snow. You can't go very fast with it, and it does turn off all the traction control stuff if you go into that deep snow profile, but we've tested it. You wanna know absolutely everything there is to know about it and see it a little bit more in action. I would then suggest taking a look at the video that we did on the Subaru Forester. If you're looking for a small vehicle like this though, you know, it works out. Again, there's no standout feature, but you do get the safety and security that you would want out of a Subaru and you know as long as you don't mind the interior being pretty much the same thing we've seen for a while now then there's not much to fault about it at the mid-range this is good I imagine as we mentioned that the sport model in the states should come pretty much the same way equipped we get the outdoor here different name same vehicle you get the picture if you have any questions about this episode of Test Drive, please leave a comment below. Let me know. I will do my best to get back to you and answer any questions you may have about this car. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to our channel as it helps with our overall metrics and we can see how the channel is doing overall. Until next time, thanks for watching and take care.